We've been talking about kicking the habit. And uh, we, we talk about ditching drama, annihilating anger, doubt, anxiety, uh, juking jealousy. But today we want to focus on getting rid of greed. Now, when we th- think about habits, we think about someone leaves constantly leaves the refrigerator door open or constantly leaving the lights on or, or, or constantly does not balance their checkbook or, you know, it's just bad habits that we, we have. Some people, how many are sitting next to someone that you constantly leave the garage door open and you forget to close it? Anybody, anybody in the room like that? My neighbors all around me, they leave their garage door open like nearly 24-7. It's crazy. Go right into their house and Take whatever, they, take whatever they can get. But we're, we want to talk to uh, just quickly today about getting rid of greed. Now, um, I just hit the wrong button. How many have, you'll just be really honest, and how many would say, there's been some times in your life that you just, you just you struggle with a little bit of greed, right? Absolutely. That's, that's, that's everybody in here in this room. See, greed is an intense and selfish desire, and I found this, I found this interesting. It's a, an intense and selfish desire for something, especially wealth. Right? We, when we think of greed, we think of you know it's it's all, it's all about money. But power, greed for power, but for food. How many are greedy with their food? Yeah. I used to be like that. Come on, I used to be like that, especially when we were first married. You, you get something that you really want, and, of course, she wants to have a bite of it. Well, if you wanted that, why didn't you order it? Right? How many greedy people, food greeters, do we have here, right? I, I used to be like that. Now I share. Don't, am I a sharer? I'm a sharer now. But we see greed on, on, on a lot of different levels, even on some of the cartoons that we get, you know, like Finding, finding Nemo, right? It's like those birds, just like mine, 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 it's mine, mine, right? They, they want the fish, it's all mine. So here's some quick truths about greed, all right? Number one, greed begins at an early age. Children uh, with their toys and especially their candy – I'm not kidding you, every Sunday when we're out there, uh, Pastor Lori and I, we're standing out there and we're, we're, we're shaking hands, little guys come by and they've got the little dum-dum suckers, right? Give me some gum, dum-dum, right? So they got the, the suckers and I, I'm like, oh, did you bring that for me? And they're like, oh, right? Uh, every week, and some adults do that too, right? And so, especially with candy, here's another truth, you don't have to be rich to be greedy, because many times we think of just the, the wealthy. Well, they're, they're wealthy because they're greedy, and they're, they're just trying to walk over people to get. You don't have to be rich to be greedy. I've seen some people that don't, don't hardly have, you know, they don't have a nothing, but they're not going to share nothing. Even if someone was dying right next to them, they ain't going to give nothing. Number three, greed's best friend is arrogance. How many have known someone they're bragging about all that they have and all that they do, but then something happens, boop, they lose their job and they lose all their income? I've had some relatives like that. Will literally throw it in your face of all they've done, all their accomplishments, and I take a step back and I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for what I got. And then they lose it all. And then they, they lose their house. They lose something. Listen, greed's best friend is arrogance. And number four, the enemy of greed is generosity. Generosity. I re- recall a story about a man who was very wealthy. He had made, he made a, a, a lot of investments throughout his life, and he, and he accumulated a lot of wealth and a lot of stuff, right? But what we found from this is that this man was so greedy, he even put it in his will that he wanted to be buried with his wealth. And his wife was very loving. His wife was very trustworthy. And so he made her agree to bury him in his castle with all all his coins, you know, everything that he has, buried it with him. Well, it came time for the funeral. They had the funeral, and she went up, and, and, and someone asked her, did you really do that? And she, she looked at him and said, well, absolutely, I'm honorable. Well, what'd you do? She said, I wrote him a check. <laughs> Cast that one, big boy. <laughs> and you saw her at Sizzler later on. I'm going Sizzler. 
right? So in 2 Samuel chapter 24, we read a story that there's a lot of different stories in the Bible that we could have brought about uh, and talked about greed, but this one right here caught my attention. 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 15 and 16, it says this, So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning, and it lasted for three days. And a total of 70,000 people died throughout the nation. But from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south, as the angel of the uh, angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented and said to the death angel, "Stop! Everybody, say stop. That's enough." And at that moment, the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna the Jezebite. Now you say, "Well, what does that have to do with greed?" Well, we're going to find out here in just a second. Here's some facts about greed. Greed number one, greed puts faith in its resources. Greed puts faith in its resources. The scripture that we just said is near the end of the story. How did they get to that point? How did they get to the point that 70,000 people died throughout the nation, this plague that, that, that lasted? You think of a plague, but you don't think that God is allowing this to happen until you hear the death angel and God said, stop. You see, greed puts faith, uh, puts faith in its own resources. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, we see this, verse 2. So the king said to Joab and the commanders of the army, I want you, David, to you go ahead, you just take a census of all the tribes from Israel, from Dan to the north to the Beersheba in the south, so I may know how many people there are. But Joab replied to the king David, May the Lord your God let you live to see a hundred times as many people as there are now. But why, my Lord the king, do you want to do this? Even the commander of the army said, King David, why are you doing this? Why are you putting your faith and your hope and your trust and your resources? Why are you putting your faith and your, and your hope in men and counting what you have? Let's continue on to put our trust in God. May, may the Lord, see, he was starting to give him a blessing in the midst of this. May the Lord give you a hundred times more than what's, what you have. But David, David wanted that day to count his resources. You see, that's what greed will do to you. You put faith in your stocks, you put faith in your bonds, you put faith in your resources, you put faith in your home, you put faith in the stuff that you got. Hello, can I get a witness here today? Psalm chapter 20 verse 7 says this, Some, they trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Boy, it's a scary thing when we're putting our trust in something that can be destroyed. Right? Isn't it something we, listen, you have something that you cherish and you, you, you know, oh boy, if I hold on to this long enough, it's going to be worth something and then your basement floods and you lose all your baseball cards. Right? I mean, come on. When we put our trust and our hope in something that can fade away, right? The Bible tells us do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust can destroy and thieves can break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there where your heart is also. You see, greed puts faith in its resources. But this is, well, listen to this. Greed will always justify its actions. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 29, it says this. On one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. You know, there's only one thing in the Bible that says to test the Lord? Only one area. Test me. And it's in our area of generosity. Don't test the Lord in anything else. He's sovereign. He's mighty. And even Jesus, test me in this way. See if I'm not lying to you. See if I'll tell you the truth. And many times greed comes out of as a result of fear. We're afraid we're not going to have enough. And God says, hey, listen, test me in this, and I will show you. And this is why we got to kick this habit. we got to put our trust in God and not our resources. But when we do that, if we're not careful, we put our trust in our resources, we'll begin to justify our actions. This man stood up to test Jesus. And he said, Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit life 
inherit eternal life. And he says this, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and your mind, and love, the, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And the guy said this, you have answered correctly. Or Jesus said, you've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And this is what, what blows my mind. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, well, who's my neighbor? Right? He was just asking, and God, Jesus said, hey, listen, do this, do this, do this. Well, well really, who is my neighbor? You see, many times we want to justify our actions by trying to... to Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain over here. Look over there. But what about that over there? We try to justify it. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, we go back to this and and we see just the opposite. When David saw the angel of the Lord, remember David himself, he's the one that wanted the fighting men counted. He's the one that wanted to have his the, the, the children of Israel put their faith in this is how strong we are, this is how mighty we are. And as a result of that, the Lord came and swept the plague through. 70,000 people died. Well, listen, David had an opportunity right here to justify his actions. And it says this in verse 17, 2 Samuel 24, 17, when David saw the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who sinned and done wrong. He accepted responsibility. He didn't justify himself. I'm the one who has sinned. But these people, they're as innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. And here's what we have to understand. David was not just praying a prayer right then for that moment. David didn't even realize it, but he was praying prophetically because 28 generations later, here comes Jesus on the scene. He's the one that died. He became the sin who knew no sin. He became the one, the eternal sacrifice. David had no idea over here on this side when he sinned, when he put his faith in his resources, he had no idea when he said, Lord, these people are not at fault. Lord, let it fall upon me and my family. He didn't even realize it. 28 generations later, here comes Jesus on the scene. You see, be careful what you pray for. Be deliberate in how you pray. Because 28 generations later, you never know what's going to come on the scene because of result of your prayers right now. You see, we're so focused on what we pray and it happening right now, but we do not understand that in heaven, I, there's, there's got to be a warehouse for prayers that's unanswered, that God has not yet answered, and it's being stored up. It's already answered. It's on the way. It, we just have changed our address on the other end. What happens when you change your address and you don't notify? Return to sender. Some of you are getting that this morning. Number three, I found this, that greed, it dodges obedience. Right? Greed dodges obedience. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. But Samuel replied, What's more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or you, your obedience to his voice. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than <clears throat> offering the fat of rams. Rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as bad as worshiping idols. Man, that's just that's so crazy to think about. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. This is a story about King Saul, the very first king of Israel. God told him what to do. You're supposed to wipe everything out. I'm establishing you. But all of a sudden, instead of doing that, he's holding on. It's greed. He's holding on. And when he gets caught, he blamed it on his soldiers. He blamed it on Oh, we're just keeping these for a sacrifice to the Lord. And that's where we see Samuel come in and said, what's better, your burnt offerings or your obedience to the Lord? It dodges obedience. Greed dodges obedience. You see, in 2 Samuel, we go back. I hope you're tracking with me here today. 2 Samuel 24, we go back to that story about David, right? 
go back. Lord, let your, this come upon me and my family. 2 Samuel 24, it says, That day Gad, the seer, came to David and said to him, Go up and I want you to build an altar of the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna the Jezebite. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded him. Now remember, the angel, the death angel was right there. David had caused this mess. David is accepting the mess. Now David needs to do something to fix the mess. You hear? David could have said, you know, I ain't going up there. He slaughtered, you know, he slaughtered 70,000 people. I ain't going, in three days. In three days, 70,000 people. And you could even see the death angel. I ain't going up there. Are you crazy? No, 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 no. The seer came, the prophet came and said, I want you to go and I want you to do this, to build an altar here. So David went up to do what the Lord had commanded. See, greed will dodge obedience. And I've seen people, what happens is instead of drawing near to the Lord when the Lord's called them to do something, when the Lord's called them to be generous, all of a sudden we get sick that morning. No, I'm being for real. All of a sudden we get a sniffle. And you act like you're in intensive care. Right? And so now, well, I, didn't, I missed my opportunity to give, so then... Uh-huh, that's right. If you're with me, say, uh-huh. uh-huh. Number four, greed, it's going to avoid contact. Greed avoids contact. You ever seen... Have you ever seen somebody... And you notice that they're trying to avoid you, and so they speed up down the aisle. <laughs> I had someone do that in Walmart. I'm going along, and I'm looking at them, like, getting ready, like, and all of a sudden they go, and I mean, they almost ran with the cart, with the baby in the cart. I'm like, good golly, Miss Molly, what's wrong with you, right? You see, greed avoids contact. Romans chapter 2 Verses 1 through 3 says this, You may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and should be punished, you're condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these same, very same thing. And we know that God in his justice will punish anyone who does such things. Since you judge others, for doing these things. Why do you think you can avoid, here we go, avoid God's judgment when you do the same thing? I heard someone say this. <laughs> when we're looking at other people and the things that they're, they're doing, boy, we, we can be the best judges in the world. But when it comes to our sin, we're the top attorney. Right? You can come down in judgment and judging other people, and you are the, you're the supreme court, man. you got the answers, and you've, you've got it all wrapped up. But when it comes to dealing with your own sin, you are the best attorney on the face of this earth, and you can just kind of maneuver through there. Hello? You see, greed avoids contact. 2 Samuel chapter 24, going back to this verse, it says, When Aruna, remember, Aruna saw the king and his men coming. David's moving towards. He's trying to fix this now. He got, he got told by the prophet, I want you to go up and I want you to build an altar right here. Here's Aruna. Here's, here's, here's the threshing floor. Here's David coming with, with all you know, the stuff that he's got to do. And now here's the death angel standing over here saying, Oh, Lord, man, I'm getting kind of bored here. I want some more people to chew up, right? So in 2 Samuel, when Aruna saw king and his men coming toward him, he came and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Why have you come, my lord the king? And Aruna asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and to build an altar to the Lord there so that he will stop the plague. David knew he was the cause of this. He went and met face to face. He's going to get it done one way or another. I'm not going to avoid this. I'm accepting responsibility, and I'm not going to be greedy about it. Number five, if you're not careful, greed will let somebody else pay the bill. And let's take away, because your mind is already, when you think of bill, you're already thinking about money. You're already thinking about that. Think about this. We want revival. We want the Spirit of God to move. 
But we're just willing to let Nona and Jared and Ryan and Jesse pay the bill. Sharon Colston come in here of a morning. We want revival where we want somebody else to pay the bill coming a little bit early to pray. Mm. See, no one likes it when the preacher talks like that. Greed will let somebody else pay the bill. In Mark chapter 7, young people hear me, in Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23, it says, for from within... Everybody do this. Just tap your chest. For from within, out of a person's heart come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, thrown right in the mix with this, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. Those things are what defile you and many times we blame the other person we blame the other person well if they hadn't have introduced me to this then I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in today hello how many have ever blamed somebody else for your own wrongdoing come on let's just be really honest here absolutely it wasn't me it was Julie right second Samuel chapter 24 verse 22 we go back to the story about King David remember David went up Aruna was there. He's like, David's like, I want to buy all this. Listen to this. This is, what's, this is what's crazy. Aruna said, here, you take it. It's yours. Take it, my lord the king. Use it as, your wi- as you wish, Aruna said to David. Here are the oxen for the burnt offering, and you can use the threshing boards and the ox yokes for wood to build a fire on the altar. I will give it to you your majesty, and may the Lord your God accept the sacrifice. He was willing to pay the price for somebody else's sacrifice. How often are you and I willing to allow someone else to sacrifice what we need to give to the Lord? We're going to let somebody else do that. We're going to let somebody else pay the price. We're going to let somebody else flip the bill. Man, if you're with me, say, "Uh uh-huh. So quickly here this morning, how do I get rid of greed? How do I get rid of it? Number one, you need to learn to hold loosely and live generously. Hold loosely. There are things in this, in, in it, that you have in your life that we sometimes we think are so important, but at the end, when it's all over, how really important are those things? How really important? Is that thing keeping you from your destiny in the Lord? Is that thing, is that item, is it, is it holding you back? Maybe God is saying, release it to me. Maybe he's not even asking you to get rid of it. Maybe he's saying, I need you to give this to me and you devote your time to me. Hold loosely and live generously. Number two, how do I get rid of greed? Listen and obey. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. Right? Doesn't it? Pray without ceasing. And we've talked about this before. What is prayer? Is prayer a monologue or is prayer a dialogue? It's conversation with our king, Pethy. Right? It's conversation with our king. So if the Bible is telling us to have a conversation without, with God without ceasing, that means the Lord is speaking to us all the time. We're just not giving him ear. And I will tell you this. The Lord... It's constantly speaking to us. It's to be generous. You'll be walking, and, you'll, you, and this happens to me. You'll be eating dinner, and the Lord draws your attention to someone, and he may say, pay for their dinner or pay for their groceries or pay for that stuff. And all of a sudden, we justify our actions. No, that's just me. That's just me. Can I tell you, the devil ain't going to tell you to bless nobody. <laughs> the devil's not going to tell you to bless anybody. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy, right? So we got to listen, and we've got to obey. Number three, how do I get, get rid of greed? You stop cooking the books. 
Stop cooking the books. Well, Pastor, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't have enough. Stop cooking the books. God has blessed us. Look at us in this. If you would take all of us in this room, I can let's hop on a plane and I can take you to places all over this world that you are kings and queens. You are the richest people on the face of the earth. When we go to Guatemala, there's a guy literally taking those, those rocks made from lava and building up the streams that are coming down, building up the road, and he makes $6 a day doing that. Right? Am I right? Six, equivalent of $6 a day. We are the richest people on earth. Stop cooking the books. Stop lying to ourselves. We can live generously. But the problem is we're, we, we operate so many times out of fear instead of what God says. Well, Lord, I'm not going to have enough to pay this bill. I'm not going to have enough. Can you just trust God? Walk faithful in what God has commanded you to walk faithful in. Stop cooking the books. Number four, how do I get rid of greed? You got to contradict your flesh. You got to contradict your flesh because your flesh is going to be like, no, I've got to save. I've got to save. You know, you're like, you're like uh, Donald Duck, you know, in, 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 the, in, in the Aladdin's castle or whatever, and he's found the big pearl and he's got all the stuff and he's like, it's mine, it's mine, it's all mine. Remember, how many remember that little cartoon right there? Looney Tunes. It's mine. It's all mine. Man, it, stop contradicting your flesh, man. Let go and let God. You see, in reality, God's given us everything that we need. And he's told us, hey, listen, you can keep your 90% if you want to, but I, I'm just, I, give me what's mine. Even as a church, we're dependent upon the generosity of people to reach around the world. And when that goes thin, then the ministry goes thin. Your generosity to the Lord, it goes, it goes thin. Hello? I'm just being real here. Number five, how do I get rid of greed? <laughs> this is going to sound really stupid. You need to watch this right here. It's called The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. Can I tell you, your life will be turned upside down by just living a life of generosity and listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Guys, we got to kick this. We got to kick this bad habit. We got to kick this bad habit. And we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to use us. How many want to be used by the Lord? The problem is, many times we want to be used by the Lord, but only these boxes, God. Right? Only these boxes. Let's go back. I got two passages of scripture. Second Samuel chapter 24. Remember, David counted the mighty men, right? He counted all that all the stuff. It wasn't good. Picked the penalty. God sent the angel of death. 70,000 people had died. David cried out to the Lord, remember? David cried out to the Lord, Lord, these people have done nothing. This is on me. Let it rest upon me and my family. The prophet comes in. Listen, let's fix this. You need to go to where the threshing floor is. You need to buy it. You need to set up an altar. David goes. Out comes Aruna the Jezebite. Hey, David, what, you want? what, are, you, what are you doing here? Like they're having a conversation and the angel of death is right there. I want to buy all this. And Aruna said, hey, listen, you can have it all. I want this done just as much as you do. You can have it all. And here's where we are. 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. But the king replied to Aruna, no, I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. I want you to let that sink in. That's why it's so easy to let other people sacrifice and we sit around the warm fire. There are people in this congregation that you have labored in prayer, prayer you have travailed, 
you're intercessors and you've prayed for God, but other people you are just experiencing. Last week we had blowout service. How many was here last week? Come on, oh my word. I've never in Hope Church felt, I've never in Hope Church felt the spirit of repentance flow through this place and people ran to these altars. Third song in. I've never sensed that before. Years ago, back when at the Brownsville Revival, I've never experienced that before until just last week. People are sacrificing. People are sacrificing and praying and seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Not so a few of us can just kick our feet back and enjoy the fire, right? I hope you're getting that idea. David said this, I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that's cost me nothing. So David bought the bought the place, he built up an altar, and the Lord answered his prayer for the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. Just like that. As quickly as it came, his generosity, his obedience, his pushing away greed, his accepting responsibility for his own actions, the plague had stopped. How many say in your life there's some habits that you have that you need to kick? Right out the door. Come on. Let's just be real. There's some habits that we need to kick. And in the name of Jesus, we got to kick this habit of greed. Getting rid of greed in our lives and realizing that God has called us to a higher place of faith and trust and hope in Him. 